Hello and welcome, my name is Solo and this is Simple Shadow Priest Guide. But before we start that video, I would like to inform you that I also stream on Twitch on Thursdays and Sundays from 7 to 11 pm Central European time. Now let's jump into our Simple Shadow Priest Guide. So the idea of this guide is to keep it as simple as possible. So I will not confuse you with too many informations at the time. And also I don't want to scare you off from trying out this spec. So in today's video we're going to look at the Shadow Priest for upcoming expansion Shadowlands. We're going to discuss why you should consider Shadow Priest as your main class. We will look into spells and cooldowns, rotation, talent tree. Also we will discuss about stat priorities while gearing and how important is UI while dealing damage. And at the end of that video we will discuss pros and cons of the spec and hopefully I will convince you that the Shadow Priest is a really solid choice for upcoming expansion. Now let's do a quick introduction of the Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest got reworked recently in the Shadowlands pre-patch and now is more simple to understand. The whole concept of the class is kind of back to the old school where you will focus on dotting your targets, keeping those dots up all the time and doing some burst damage as well. The Shadow Priest playstyle is very unique. You have Insanity, which is like your power that you can spend for more powerful spells. The whole concept is to build up your insanity with the basic spells and then spend it for more powerful spells. While doing it you have to watch to not overcap your insanity because it will lead to DPS loss. So the whole concept is like a builder and spender playstyle. You will build up your power and then spend it for more powerful spells. Let's discuss the Shadow Priest abilities first. We will start from the dots. And the dots stands for damage over time. You will cast those spells on the target and while they are applied on the target they will do some damage over time. After they are expired you have to reapply them again. You will use those dots as your main damage source and we have three of them. Vampiric Touch, Shadow Ward Pain, and Devouring Plague. For your direct damage abilities you have a Mind Blast, Mind Flay and a Mind Seer for some AoE damage. You also have a Void Bolt which is available while you are in the Void form. And that simply leads us to a Shadow Priest cooldowns. Our main cooldown will be a Void Eruption. While you cast that, you will enter a Void form and you will be able to cast Void Bolts. The cooldown is 1.5 minute and it's your main damage dealing cooldown. We also have a Shadow Fiend, which is 3 minute cooldown, but with some talent choices, you can replace that with the Mind Bender and it can be down to 1 minute cooldown. We also have a power infusion. And the power infusion, it's a 2 minute cooldown. So that will be your main spells and cooldowns. And now we can jump straight into the Shadow Priest rotation. Let's start with the single target rotation first. You will engage your target with applying the dots, Shadow Ward Pain and Vampiric Touch. Then you will cast a Mind Blast, followed by the Mind Flays until another Mind Blast is ready to cast. Now you should have enough insanity to cast Devouring Plague, so cast it immediately. You will repeat those steps until you have enough insanity to cast another Devouring Plague. Making sure also to reapply your dots. If you enter the fight with the cooldown ready for the Void Form, cast the Void Form, it will reset the cooldown for your Mind Blast, then cast the Mind Blast followed by the Void Bolt. 
make sure to keep casting a Void Bolt on every cooldown, filling the gaps with the Mind Blast and the Mind Flay, and spending the excess of the Insanity for the Devouring Plague. Also for a single target damage, don't forget to use your cooldowns, which is a Shadow Fiend or a Mind Bender, and the Power Infusion. When your Void Form ends, you will get back to your basic rotation, which is applying the dots to the target, casting Mind Blast on every cooldown, filling the gaps with the Mind Flay, and spending excess insanity for a Devouring Plague. While your main target is below 20% health, you will use Shadow Ward Death as well. The multi-target rotation will become a bit more tricky and challenging, as you have to apply the dots for all your targets, spending insanity for a Devouring Plague, while in the Void form, cast the Void Bolt on every cooldown and filling the gaps with the Mind Seer for AoE damage. As you can see, the rotation is not that really complicated. You will dot your targets, build up your insanity with your basic abilities, and then spend them on the Devouring Plague. Like we said at the beginning of that video, is it a builder and spender playstyle. Now let's jump into the talent tree. This section is that one that you can get confused the most simply by too much information, and that's why. I will not go into the details of every talent, instead I will let you guys know what's the best pick and why, and what the alternatives you can have as well. So let's start. For the first throw, you will choose Fortress of the Mind, because it's the strongest choice here and it will do the most damage from all of them. For the second row, the best choice it will be Body and Soul. It will provide us with some extra movement speed, which can be quite handy in many situations. But all the other talents can be considered here too. And to be honest, there is a no wrong pick here in this talent tree row. Moving into the row number 3. The misery here will be the superior choice, but you can also consider twist of fate for some extra single target damage. Moving into the next row. You got two solid options here, I personally using Physic Horror for some extra utility, but you can consider a last word as well for the reduced cooldown. The row number 5, the only good option here will be Officious Spirits. The row number 6, the Mind Bender here will be the best choice, providing us with solid damage and insanity gain and reduced cooldown for a Shadow Fiend. And finally, we move into the last row. And here you have two solid options as well. The Hungering Void will be the all-rounded option for an extra single target damage. And you can also consider the Surrender of Madness as your burst finish cooldown. Although I will not recommend Surrender to Madness to the beginners, but it will only confuse you by adding extra cooldown to your rotation. Ok, that's done. Now let's move to the stat priorities. Intellect is our primary stat and it is a priority for us. It will increase our spell power. Next we will look for haste, which will increase the casting speed of our spells, increase the dot damage and lower global cooldowns. After haste, we will look for a mastery now, and it will increase our damage overall. Next in our priority list, it will be a critical chance for spells, then versatility. So ideally, you will be looking for haste mastery on your gear, stick to that rule, and you will be doing great damage. Let's move to the user interface now. In my opinion, UI is crucial, for good damage dealing. I like to keep mine as clean as possible, so I can see all the important informations. I like my dots being kind of big, so I can clearly see when I need to reapply them. So my setup is really simple, and I will link all my add-ons list in the description below. For the player frames and targets, I use shadowed unit frames, 
or action bars, I use bartender and I move the all important spells just below my character so I can keep my eyes most of the time on where I'm standing and what I'm doing. Also, when you start your journey with Shadow Priest at the beginning, you will probably keep your eyes most of the time on that spell rotation and that position of the bars will help you to see incoming abilities of the monsters and right bosses. Many Shadow Priests out there use this weak auras for the spells and cooldowns, but I like to keep mine as simple as possible. I still use weak auras for the cast bar and for the insanity bar, but it is a personal choice and I can only encourage you to try it out for yourself. For the right frames, I use the standard frames as I am not planning to heal in this expansion. For the nameplates, I have two choices here. I am still trying to decide between tidy plates and the Kui nameplates, but both of them are the really great choice and it will highlight all your debuffs on the target. As you can see, there is not that many add-ons and in my opinion, simplicity is a key. Ok, now let's wrap up this video and let's discuss with the pros and the cons of the spec and I will try to convince you that the Shadow Priest is a really solid choice. As you can see from the guide, this class is really simple to play. It's not that many buttons to press and you can learn the rotation in no time. The question that you need to ask for yourself is do you like this kind of playstyle? Dots, building up your insanity and then spend it for more powerful spells. As every class, you will need to spend some time setting up your bars, keybinds, UI etc. But as you can see from my UI, it is not that many add-ons to set up and it's not a crazy amount of work to do. In my opinion, Shadow Priest is all rounded class. It has a really nice single target damage, a nice AoE damage and it will do just well in all kind of scenarios. To convince you even more, if you want to do a great damage, for upcoming expansion it looks like Shadow Priest will be on top of that damage list. That's it for that video, I hope you guys enjoyed my simple Shadow Priest guide and if you do, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers goal. And if you have any questions, just post them down below and I'll try to answer all of them. Thank you very much for watching, keep dotting, peace.